This training is about explaining the purpose and goals of our local Democratic Party. We need to understand why our organizational structure is necessary in order to build long-term lasting power. We definitely have the long game in mind. You are our Democratic Party. You're the ones that keep it moving forward and you are always there. So thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. This is wild to have you here. My name is Mandy. I'm an instructional design specialist here at NDTC. Today, we are learning about setting up your local Democratic Party structure, which is going to be facilitated by our star trainer, Christy Pagan. So yeah, Christy, I'm handing it to you. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Michigan. A little bit about myself. I'm a former Michigan State Representative. I served my term of six years in the Michigan State House. Uh, before that, I actually helped create and founded our local Democratic Party, which is what we're talking about the, today, uh, and is still going strong and has really helped a lot of Democrats run for office and win their elections. So I'm really here as a resource to you, both as someone who has worked on political campaigns before I ran for office, uh, someone who has uh, worked to help set up a local Democratic Party, and then also someone who ran for office and was successful. So Great to be with you and uh, thanks for joining NDTC's training. Just some ground rules, of course, take a deep breath, make sure you're comfortably seated and stretch. Uh, this is our NDTC norms, be respectful of others, be present and ask questions and participate. Of course, this training is for you. So let's go ahead and get started here. So. Uh, first and foremost, uh, this training is about explaining the purpose and goals of our local Democratic Party. We need to understand why our organizational structure is necessary in order to build long-term lasting power and to discuss best practices for setting up our local Democratic Party. So Icebreaker, what is one big goal you want to accomplish this year for your local Democratic Party? It could be big, it could be small, it could be super specific, it could be a vision. You know, what do you want to accomplish this year? Lori wants to grow the membership of their local democratic organization. Uh, Shari wants to, oh my gosh, so many chats are coming in, um, expand the number of Dems actively involved, increasing membership and member activity. That is a really big theme throughout this Okay, chapter. great, yes. A lot of membership, recruitment, retainment, support. Of course, of course, growing our membership is key to our success and making sure that we have, you know, an active Democratic Party is all about membership and volunteer and uh, making sure we are supporting great candidates running for office. So, so the goals of the local Democratic Party, here is what we believe your goal should be for your local organization. Uh, it's responsible for the Democratic Party's activities below the state level, such as city, county, or district. Activities could include party membership retention and recruitment, volunteer organizing, and of course, direct voter contact. So here are some big picture goals for our local Democratic Party. We talked, you know, we already touched on membership recruitment and retaining active members is especially key to our uh, long-term, building long-term political power and building long-term infrastructure that can be sustainable. Uh, so definitely membership is the key to our success here and making sure our members have good experiences and that are engaged and potentially move up within our organization. Uh, next is engage existing donors and identify prospective ones. So oftentimes local democratic parties have existing PACs that are affiliated with them where they can then help raise money to support Democratic candidates in your area. Identify new supporters through outreach events. So being present in the community. Uh, I know our local Democratic Party, we always had you know, a booth at the annual Liberty Festival every July. Um, we actually did a lot of community service events, uh, such as you know, collecting socks and underwear um, for those in need or participating in food drives. So we really wanted to have a um, uh, community give back element to our local Democratic Party to be uh, to be um, stewards of our community. Uh, so things like that, just making sure that you're doing outreach, forging partnerships with community-based organizations that share your values, 
Um, we oftentimes would partner with our local domestic violence shelter and do drives for them um, and just really try to give back to the community as well as promote our Democratic Party values. Identify potential candidates and relationships with your existing elected officials. And then finally develop a coordinated campaign committee to work with your county or your state party. So when we're thinking about all these big picture things, it's also important to think about how are we actually going to execute them? And how can we be super specific in order to make sure we're achieving our goals? So oftentimes the SMARTY uh, acronym comes up where we can really try to make sure that our goals are specific, they're measurable, they're actionable, relevant, time-bound, inclusive, and equitable. So for example, if you are trying to grow your party membership, say your goal is 50 new members this year, can we go through the Smarty checklist and say, how are we going to actually get 50 new members this year? While it's important to think about big picture items as well as small, specific, and tangible goals, we also want to realize what phase we're in within the election cycle. So we have kind of two phases we think about when we're organizing locally. One is definitely the election cycle. We all know that, that phase. Um, when candidates are actively campaigning, we're supporting them, and we are out there knocking on doors, talking to voters, raising money, and getting people to vote. The uh, other phase, if you will, is what we call the building phase. This is also equally important because this is the time we can take to really reflect on what worked and what didn't work in the election phase. We can set our goals for the year or for the cycle. We can continuously build capacity through membership recruitment, events, uh, and doing things throughout the community. Uh, we can reorganize or restructure our local Democratic Party with different leaders or members who may be good for leadership roles, and then finally strengthen our relationship with existing partners and try to bring in new partners uh, to work alongside us. So assessing progress to goals includes three things. First, not only are we doing our SMARTY acronym, but then this is how we're actually going to execute what our overall goal is and how we're going to see if kind of our strategy or our approach is working. So first you wanna plan, identify your metrics, set goals, choose your tactics. Next, you wanna track and execute uh, your, your strategy. So if it is to gain 50 new members in your Democratic Party, you know, how are you tracking that progress? Who is saying, you know, this we've received a new membership or perhaps a renewal membership? Uh, and then trying to report back and analyze, you know, what types of outreach is working, what is not working. And then finally adapting, um, you know, identify missed opportunities, define your problems, and then name your solutions. And then finally, before I get into any questions, there's uh, something that I think our opponents have done pretty well. You know, we somewhat talk about it a lot where we know that the Republican Party has been in it for the long game, right? That they have had a 50 year plus uh, plan and they have executed it. Uh, so what now when we're trying to build up our local Democratic Party, we definitely have the long game in mind. So as an organization navigates finite, you know, finite games, so our short-term goals to either meet, exceed, or fall short of our goals, we want to make sure we still have the big picture in mind. One thing that I personally you know, love and appreciate about our local Democratic parties is that it's always in existence. A campaign or a candidate may come and go, but our local party infrastructure is so important. And for us to be able to stay focused and organize and be there when it's not always the election cycle and have that continuous effort of trying to identify voters, raise money, get new members, uh, and really expand our base, that's going to pay off in the long term. So 
want to make sure that, you know, our local party leaders, our county party leaders, state leaders, they're all always thanked and appreciated because you are our Democratic Party. You're the ones that keep it moving forward and you are always there. So thank you. All right. So with that, yes, what questions do you have? So we had two people ask the same question, which I thought was a really good one. How do you define a member? Um, and then when you're done answering that, I will ask the next one. Yes. So we'll touch on it a little bit, but typically a organization, a local Democratic Party organization has, you know, bylaws that say actually define what a membership is. Also include the bylaws would include leadership roles within the organization, decision making processes of how they're going to approve things. Um, but it's really up to you how you define a member. Typically, in my experience, I've seen that people pay membership dues to the local Democratic Party, and that is what classifies them as a member. If someone cannot uh, is not able to make a financial contribution, then they can receive a free membership. They just have to indicate they would like to join uh, by, by writing and writing. And then a membership director or somebody within our local party keeps track of all the members. And so is this a new member or an existing member? Do we have their contact information? Are they on our email list? Um, and then two, uh, in addition to financial, financially giving to the local Democratic Party, that in a turn could be then created into a PAC. And then those uh, membership dues could then help support Democratic candidates in your area. So that's how I've seen it done in the past, where it's either in writing, you're asking for a free membership or you're making a small contribution as a membership due uh, to your local party. Awesome. Thank you. The next one comes from Yolanda, who asks, are there term limits for Democratic Party board members? That's usually up to the board <laughs> and the bylaws. So typically it is, you know, in our favor to make sure that there's new leadership coming in ever so often, but it's really up to you to decide uh, whether or not you have certain term limits or somebody can serve in a certain capacity for a number of years. Um, one thing I will point out and know, as I'm sure most of us know, is that most of our local Democratic parties or county parties have to operate by our state party bylaws and guidelines. So if your state has set out and said, your state Democratic Party has said, oh, you can only, you know, serve in the leadership capacity for so long, then that has to be applied to the local party as well. Awesome. And then we have one last one for this batch of questions. Someone asked, essentially, how do we leverage social media as a Democratic Party? Because it seems like state and, and or national parties get more attention. I think being leveraging social media, you just have to be super specific. You have to, you know, give your reason why somebody should want to join your local Democratic Party or if, if that's your if that's the purpose of your social media po post. You know, for me, I always wanted to make sure we had more young people involved in our party and that um, one way to do that was to try to, you know, make it more about social and having friends and going out and um, I think it did work uh, where we had like happy hours or we had, um, you know, people that perhaps young people admire, like, you know, somehow if we got like Elizabeth Warren to come in through town, uh, we wanted to make sure that that was known uh, amongst young people in our community to join the Democratic Party. So uh, for me, I think it's all about localizing your social media and making sure that you're giving a compelling reason why somebody should participate or join your organization. All right. And we actually got one more in and then I promise we will move on. Um, Ania asks, should being a registered voter be a requirement for party membership? I feel like that's a given, but I'll leave it to you. <laughs> I believe that it actually is a requirement for most uh, state Democratic parties that you do have to be a registered voter. Um, now it's maybe up to you whether or not that registered voter is in your community or not, because sometimes we have neighboring districts or neighboring communities where somebody wants to be a part of a different uh, democratic organization. So, um, but for the most part, yes, you would have to be a registered voter.
To apply the skills you're building from this training, we put the link to our free two-year strategic plan template in the description below. We built this template to help you achieve your goals and keep up your momentum. And with its help, you're going to lay out where your local party is going, what strategies you're going to use, and what details from your local area are important. So download the two-year strategic plan template in the link below to continue improving your community. Now back to the training. The importance of structure. So we're going to just touch a little bit about party structure and how it can potentially be set up. So So reaching goals through leadership capacity and structure. So our big picture goal is our local party goals. So whether that's increasing membership, raising money, um, maybe we are working on improving our voter file, which I know a lot of us struggle with or have complaints about our vote builder or van. So we can take the time now during the building phase to, you know, double check our information about voters in our district or in our community, make sure we have the right um, phone number for folks or ad- email address or uh, home address. And then next, as we kind of get more specific, building that financial and human capacity is so important. We touched a little bit about, you know, our potential membership dues could become a PAC or um, some sort of organizational support system for our candidates. So we are giving directly to Democratic candidates in our area through our local Democratic Party. And then, of course, human capacity includes our membership and our leadership within the organization. And then active members and a clear structure. So let's see if we can touch on that, the actual structure of the party. So when we're talking about internal human capacity, we're talking about members and leaders. So Oftentimes, you know, we this is how we work and organize our local party. We have to have members and then we have an executive board or some sort of leadership board within the organization. So our letters of engagement, our principles for organizing kind of 101 is we want to make it super easy and fun to join our local Democratic Party. So whether that's you're having um, some sort of social meetup or you're doing a community um, outreach event or uh, you're really you're trying to support or uplift a great organization, uh, nonprofit in your community, we want to make it easy and fun. So that would be kind of where are we finding volunteers and how are we getting people engaged in our local party? Two would be how do we convert those folks that we're doing outreach to, to actually becoming members, joining our local uh, DEM clubs or DEM organizations. And then how do we get them to participate, right? Attend meetings or volunteer when we're doing days of action um, or to uh, step step up and become a leader within the organization. And then that would kind of be the last ladder of our engagement would be somebody is taking ownership and leadership within our organization, becoming, you know, precinct chair or um, membership director or, or perhaps running the whole organization. So your internal structure, your local organizations require to support structure to manage. So when we're talking about bylaws specifically, this is where we would outline the details of the specific responsibility. So um, who is responsible for what? Who is reporting to who? Uh, how are things done? How is data stored and tracked? And what accountability systems are in place? So I wanted to spotlight here. These are some NDTC online academy courses that uh, you can take to kind of further expand, talking about managing goals, strategic planning, um, organizational leadership, and then, of course, our database and GP van. Speaking of our database and GP van, so this is the leading software for Democrats in the country. There, um, this, you know, I personally love NGP van. I think it's the best uh, software out there. It is somewhat expensive, so not a lot of organizations, especially at the lo- local level, can afford this necessarily. But what it is, is a online fundraising platform where you can send emails, you can track your events, you can um, do call time, you can manage your membership. 
and it actually has a built-in compliance component for you. So if you are filing a PAC with your state or county, it will actually generate that campaign finance report for you. Now, NGP Van is often confused with Vote Builder because they're under the same parent company. Vote Builder, aka the Van, is just our voter file. It doesn't email for you. It doesn't do compliance or fundraising for you. It's just all about voter contact and storing information about voters uh, in a usable system that we can use to canvas, uh, make phone calls, send text messages, send mail to. So they are two separate databases. Oftentimes, uh, Vote Builder is a one-time fee where we just pay that up front to the state Democratic Party. NGP is a monthly fee that we're paying to NGP, the company. Okay, what questions do you have? So uh, Deborah actually just asked, how much is VAN approximately? Could you give a range? I believe it depends on how many registered voters are in your district. So if you're just purchasing, if you will, the number of registered voters in your community, you know, it can range anywhere between $200 and $2,000. But oftentimes it's only a one-time fee and you're just buying into uh, making sure that uh, you're supporting the state Democratic Party having good data. Excellent. Thank you. We had quite a few questions. So <laughs> I'm going to start from the one we got earlier um, when we were talking about board members and like a party officer. Somebody asked, should officers be actively engaged? Saying, sometimes these folks who want to be in leadership sometimes just want a title. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's up to you. I do think having specific details of the roles and responsibility outlined in the bylaws is important to make sure that everybody knows what's going on and that you can hold somebody accountable if they are not fulfilling those duties. Um, you know, I will say organizing local democratic parties are somewhat challenging. I think that there's a lot of people that want to help and do good work. And then it just becomes a lot of different personalities, which I'm sure a lot of us have uh, experienced. And so that's why if we could take a step back and just kind of evaluate what are our goals for the organization, how are we going to get there and who's going to do what I think is a better way to approach and be like, super clear and specific on this is what we're asking you to do. Is this something that you can do and fulfill? Awesome. We've got two more. Um, I just wanted to uplift for people in the chat. I just dropped the first of our NGP core series. That's going to answer so many of the questions that are being asked about like NGP and Van and how to do this. We have so many materials for you for that. Um, so the next question was, how important is it to distinguish between the local party and maybe an affiliated club with a similar name? You know, I think there are so many advantages to being the official local Democratic Party. One is you would get van access. You know, if there is a similar um, progressive group that's doing organizing or voter contact, typically they do not get vote builder or van access. You actually have to be a official Democratic candidate. If you're a nonpartisan candidate, you have to sign that you are a Democrat in order to get vote builder access. If you're a local Democratic Party, you typically have an agreement with your state Democratic Party that, that you are going to use this uh, information in a responsible way. Uh, but that's the biggest benefit, that you get access to our voter file, uh, and that you get recognition by our state Democratic Party that you are indeed an official group. Um, you're officially part of the uh, Democratic Party. And you should get other resources that includes perhaps training, um, recognition at state conventions, uh, you know, membership lists. Perhaps you get a piece of the state Democratic Party membership list to help build your local organization. Uh, so there sh you should feel some additional support behind you if you are the official local Democratic Party, as opposed to a like-minded progressive organization doing similar work. Uh, but I would ca categorize, that, categorize them as a partnership organization because we want them to be a part of our Democratic Party. Um, but 
you know, this is definitely separate. One idea, I'm sure you're thinking of groups like Moms Demand Action or those who are doing civic engagement in your community. And I would see them as allies, you know, as partners that we are all in this together and that we're working together to advance our democratic values. Awesome. That was a great response. We have another question. This is more about like goals and human capacity. Someone wrote, if you have very limited human capacity and basically no money, what would your top priority be? Um, And they're in New Jersey who has elections every single year, which makes it challenging to build capacity while also constantly running campaigns. That is very challenging. Yes. We have a lot of elections here in Michigan as well. Um, You know, I would definitely start small and tangible. You know, can I get 10 people in a room to talk about this? (laughs) You know, can I get five of my friends to volunteer and become officers within a local Democratic Party? So start definitely small and then try to build out from there. Uh, You know, I think having kind of both the short term and the long term goals will help you. Uh, but definitely trying not to be too overwhelmed with everything that's going on, especially if you're just constantly facing elections. That's got to be, you know, kind of brutal uh, and not being able to take the time to reflect and build and strategize and make sure that your uh, your outreach efforts are paying off. So uh, I would definitely just advise to to start small and tangible. Awesome. So we've got one more question for this round. Uh, Preston asks, can we actually create a PAC alongside the local Democratic Party? Are there any guidelines you know of for this? Yeah, typically the local Democratic Party in in itself is a PAC. So to say that you want to do it alongside them, I don't think is actually necessary because typically our local clubs or our, our local parties are PACs because we want to support our Democratic candidates. And the best way to do that is by forming a local PAC. But I will note, when you do that, you have to then be bound by campaign finance rules, not not only for your contributions and expenditures, but your reporting that you have to submit campaign finance reports on a pretty regular basis. So just make sure you know all the finance rules first before opening a PAC. Um, But for the most part, the local parties themselves are PACs. Great. All right. We are set. To okay. Move. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we talked a little bit about structure, but let's dive deeper into your local Democratic Party structure. So what are some of the leadership positions are perhaps our county party already has? So um, if you could just type those in the chat, you know, what are some of the existing positions we already know about? County chair, LD chairs, uh, chair and co-chair, secretary, treasurer, precinct chairs, county chairs, district leader, county chair, yes. election liaisons. Ooh, okay. Okay, you got it. Okay, awesome job. So love all of those positions. Here's an example of a local Democratic Party structure where we have our party organization, our e-board or our executive leadership team. And then we kind of have three different categories of folks that are helping to support the executive leadership team. So we have our working committees, our standing committees, perhaps that would be an event you're planning or a membership drive Um, that would be under a working committee. And you could even have leaders of those committees, right? Constituency groups would be um, those you're trying to target to do outreach to, including young Democrats um, or, you know, Latino uh, Latinx Democrats or others that we're really trying to engage in the community and want to be part of our local Democratic Party. And then finally, your precinct chairs or your precinct captains. These oftentimes are elected positions. You'll see them on our primary ballot. uh, But those folks are responsible for getting the word out about our Democratic Party in their local neighborhood or precinct. So example of local parties party's executive leadership team, we have our local county chair, and then we have our vice chairs, and we already have named our secretary and treasurer. Example of party of precinct chairs, we have our executive leadership, our precinct chair, and a vice chair. There will likely be a precinct chair for each precinct. So uh, oftentimes, too, we know that sometimes our local precincts go on Build. our precinct chairs or our precinct captains go unfilled. So 
part of our responsibility too could be recruiting for folks to run for precinct delegate or precinct chair uh, to make sure that those positions are filled and that we kind of have point people throughout the community that are going to be um, helping us kind of get the word out. And then our working committees could look something like this, you know, a lot of different areas within the organization, political working committee to a volunteer working committee, you know, events is like a great one. Um, our local Democratic Party uh, hosts an annual barbecue fundraising event. Uh, so we want to make sure that there is an event committee for that. And that's um, happening on an annual basis. Uh, voter contact or somebody that's responsible maybe for helping maintain our vote builder or a van um, would also be excellent uh, position within our local Democratic Party and someone who is guiding the organization to how we do direct voter contact. So whether that's door knocking, making phone calls, sending texts, writing postcards, uh, whatever uh, tool or tactic we're using to do voter outreach. And then examples of constituencies, I mentioned the Young Dems, um, African-American Dems, Los Democrates, uh, LGBTQ Dems. Uh, you know, these are some constituency groups within our Democratic Party that we wanna make sure that we're engaged with and doing outreach to. So what, can you identify, here's a discussion question, identify one gap with a role you may have. So who could you target to recruit to fill that role? So whether that's an executive team member or a uh, constituency group, we can go back. Greg says, question, we have gaps everywhere. Gaps everywhere. <laughs> So in this example, you basically could have four people and have this be your organization. So I, I want to challenge you to kind of be really specific and to be like, okay, what can I achieve like today? Like the example of getting like 10 people in a room. Can I get 10 people in a room and start talking about how we're going to organize to get members of our local Democratic Party to get out the vote when the time comes, to do candidate recruitment and support. Um, you know, what are some of the bigger goals and how are we gonna get people to help us do that? So, so I think this is a good chart right here to kind of think about, okay, we need probably an executive team and then we can have these subgroups of working committee, constituency outreach, and then our precinct captains or delegates. We also had Kristen answer saying, we have lots of need on our finance and precinct committees. Um, and Kristen is cultivating GOTV volunteers to move up the ladder of engagement. Yeah, I think we can get creative with our outreach in a variety of ways. You know, fundraising is uh, something that I think a lot of us struggle with and perhaps, you know, um, want to be better at. And so if we could think about ways where we can raise money. So um, one good example is I had a, I have a local candidate who's actually doing something for Galentine's Day because Valentine's or Galentine's is coming up. And she is just going to post things about how great it is to be to have her Galentine's Day. And um, we're hoping that it translates into raising money uh, for her campaign. But I do think it can be applied to our local Democratic Party, too, where we're just taking something small and really trying to ask people to give or support. Uh, on Wednesday, we have our state of the state address where Governor Whitmer is giving her address to the state for the first time since uh, we've claimed a Democratic majority. So, you know, is there something we can do locally around that? Uh, watch party or, you know, something fun at either, you know, a local restaurant where we're watching the state of the state. And then, uh, you know, there's often like bingo and things that we can apply to uh, political addresses like that. So I think we just got to get creative and, and do a, and execute our outreach. Okay, so the first question was, is there a job description of any of the positions that we went through, like precinct leader? Um, but Greg responded saying that they think the descriptions vary from state to state. Do you have anything to add to that? 
Yeah, I do think they vary. Uh, I would definitely ask your state Democratic Party, is there an example of bylaws where maybe you could just plug and play to be like, oh, we could maybe adjust this a little bit, but they actually have some sort of framework or written document where you could then just apply it locally. And then I actually think Google, you could probably find some good bylaws just by doing some online research. Awesome. And then we also had Tom ask, is there any data on effectiveness of using Zoom versus in-person for success in organizing and putting boots on the ground? (laughs) I mean, you tell me. (laughs) Uh, You know, I do think that, uh, you know, we've adapted to online organizing in a great way where we can join Zoom and and organize. Uh, But I don't think anything will replace that face-to-face organization. Uh, So to have in-person meetings or to be able to meet up uh, at a coffee shop or wherever, I think is uh, very valuable. But I do think being able to join online, I mean, even for this training, it's wonderful to be able to connect with everyone across the country. Uh, And if we perhaps live in a rural community or somewhere where maybe it takes a while to get to each other, or, you know, maybe you're working your working parent or your working individual can maybe join more frequently if it's online, you know, that's definitely something to consider. Yeah. It looks like a lot of the people in the chat are actually doing hybrid, which I think is the best of both worlds. Yeah. Okay. We're somewhat wrapping up here. I just want to take a moment to do a little bit of reflection on our next steps. So what are two or three steps you can take after today's training to ensure your local Democratic Party infrastructure is able to meet its goals? So I know this could maybe be like a big, a big deal, but, you know, talking about, you know, calling five friends would be like one step or, you know, can I text 10 of my friends? to see if they could meet up for coffee and then we could start to strategize or organize. So Deborah just mentioned that a lot of people in rural areas may not even have email and they've been thinking about making calls to these people about monthly meetings to kind of keep them involved. Yeah, that's great. Reaching out to elected PCOs to make sure we have good contact information, starting with phone calls. Um, Monica has assigned executive committee to head up subcommittees that facilitate engagement with monthly meetings. Um, we got Gloria leading a two-year strategic plan with one of today's webinar participants. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. Sounds like we're moving in the right direction. You have kind of your big ideas, your more tangible day-to-day, uh, goals. And then we have a few steps to execute those goals. So we wanted to suggest some online courses that are available to you for free for from NDTC's uh, online platform, membership recruitment and retention for local leaders, strategic planning, goal setting, and then setting up your organizational leadership. So Christy, with since we have a big pocket of time, would you feel comfortable opening up the space for more questions since a lot of people have questions? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so Greg says, What are some examples of value that local county parties can give to voters and candidates instead of just taking? That's a great question. So what if what can we give to value to voters instead of just asking them to do things for us? (laughs) So what comes to mind is definitely uh, civic engagement and voter education. So is there a way where you can let them know about local coffee hours? that your state legislator is holding? Is there a way for you to inform them of some big city or township uh, decision that's coming up in the community? You know, basically, can you be conduits of information where you can then connect those who are elected and or leading the community to our voters? and have draw that direct correlation of how it's impacting their lives. But I do definitely think, you know, the coffee hour schedule and making that available and then any kind of big thing, (laughs) something big, you know, that's happening in your community. Is there a way for you to get that information out? If a decision is being made, 
um, especially at like a city city council level or a township level uh, to kind of inform voters of what's going on, because hopefully then they can draw or extrapolate that their vote matters and, you know, who they are voting for matters. So the more we can kind of uplift that we have a city council, it is made of eight people. There is one person that is our mayor, you know, and really just kind of um, describe and inform folks in our community, like what is going on. I think that can be extremely helpful and impactful. All right. We have quite a few questions popping in the chat. Um, Christy, would you be able to kind of re-summarize section one, which was the goals of a local party? Someone asked for that. Yeah. So the goals of the local Democratic Party is to support our state Democratic Party or national Democratic Party at the local level. So activities would include membership, drives, retention and recruitment, volunteer organization and mobilization, and then direct voter contact. And that is when we are supporting our Democratic candidates, uh, you know, letting voters know about them and then getting out the vote. Greg asked, is there a support network for Democrats in red states to share support and ideas? <laughs> I have a recommendation first. Um, I dropped the chat, but you can look it up on Facebook if you have one. We have a trained Democrats community on Facebook, and that is a really great resource for support among local leaders, candidates, and staff. Um, and Christy, what else do you think? Yeah, that's what I would suggest is, you know, definitely tap into NDTC's network. Uh, it's a great network, both on Facebook and on LinkedIn, uh, definitely check us out there. Uh, there's got to be some support networks, right? I mean, there are definitely some red states out there and some, you know, red areas out there. So, um, and I'm sure that there are some success stories too, where, you know, we have kind of a long-term plan and we're able to execute it over, you know, years and years and years of organizing. So, I would definitely just look online. I would look for NDTC uh, and others, uh, perhaps other states, red states that have, you know, state Democratic parties, you know, can we uh, reach out to them and, and form relationships with them? Awesome. Okay. So I've got three more questions for now. Can you suggest an agenda for precinct level meetings? Ooh, an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think our agendas always have to go back to our goals. So what do you actually want your precinct delegates or your precinct captains to do? Do you want them to make phone calls? Well, do they have a phone list? Do they have uh, instructions on how to do that? Do they have a set time frame they want to do? Uh, or do you want them to do something else? Do you want them to... Uh, write postcards or do you want them to do candidate recruitment? So I think being very specific on what you want folks to do and then giving them like instructions on how to do that and then a reasonable timeline and then somebody there to support them, I think would be um, especially effective. My approach for agendas is if you do make one agenda, you can continuously build off that same agenda for the next meeting. Because then all you have to do is start with one kind of framework of how you want the meeting to go. Then your next meeting, you can reflect on the previous meeting and how that, that went. And then you can look forward on what you want to happen. So, you know, I always like the idea of having one agenda throughout like my entire life, you know, <laughs> you know, throughout our entire organizing cycle. Can we just create one document and then continuously build off of that? Awesome. All right. So before I pop in with another question, just to add on to that, I did drop a link in the chat, but if you go to traindemocrats.org and type in the search bar meeting agenda, you will find courses, mini lessons, resources with a variety of agendas that you can tailor. Um, the next question uh, talks about a party that has unfortunately fallen over the past few years. They're trying to revive it, but members are few and far between and finances are rough. Uh, what, where would they start slash focus? Yes, yes. You know, it's, uh, I would definitely start small, you know, trying to recruit, you know, your five friends to come and meet you, you know, at 
at the bar or at the coffee shop. Um, and I would try to do outreach to perhaps new groups of folks. So, you know, do you have, my first question would be like, do you have access to the van? You know, can you kind of identify uh, people in your community that, you know, maybe frequent democratic voters would be my number one target to be like somebody that always votes in every election and they have a really high democratic score. They're like, what do they think? Do they think that it would be helpful to have a local democratic party? Would they join a local democratic party? Uh, you know, why are they voting democratic every single time? So uh, doing that initial outreach upfront to new folks, I think will help. And then um, in addition, I guess my only other piece of advice is to do fun events. <laughs> so is there something that's cool or unique or fun happening in your community that you could then turn into a recruitment event for your local democratic organization? We have a large email list and a few participants. What benefits are there in paying dues in order to become a member? Well, I think that you know, the number one benefit of paying dues to become a member is that you are directly supporting and pooling your money in order to elect Democrats in your area. So, you know, I always try to make the case, you know, your $25 membership due is actually worth $5,000 to this, you know, organization, because that's the type of contribution we then can in turn make to a local Democratic candidate. And, perhaps influence the outcome of the election because our local candidates are financially supported. So always trying to be like your small contribution, your membership dues will actually be um, 10 times that because we're pooling our resources together and we are being strategic and smart with our giving. We're supporting Democrats who, you know, need the help and can make a big difference if we're making, you know, even a $100 contribution to their campaign, right? So, you know, seeing the impact of where is this money going, uh, I think is especially helpful with making the case for membership dues. Um, uh, I definitely think beyond, I think it's amazing you have such a great email list. I think to take it a step further, have those folks been contacted in other ways? You know, kind of organizing on the candidate side or when we're running um, elections, I always do a layered approach to contacting folks. So can we email them? Can we text them? Can we call them? Can we mail them? Can we knock on their door? Can we invite them to an event, right? It's always layered approaches where we're trying to reach people by multiple methods in multiple ways uh, and, then I feel like people start to respond. I think it's very easy to delete an email or have it, you know, go to spam or whatever. Um, but it's very difficult to ignore someone, you know, knocking at your door or perhaps making a phone call. And then that extra personal touch, I think, makes a difference to kind of get folks engaged and hopefully moved over to the membership side of your organization. How can you tell? high democratic scores in VAN? So in the VAN, in Vote Builder, we have access to a variety of information about voters, including their vote history, their likelihood to vote, their propensity to vote, um, their turnout score, as well as their Democratic Party score. So the Democratic Party score is typically available if you do have access to the Vote Builder or the VAN. And, uh, Every voter is scaled or weighed on a 100-point scale on likeliness of being a Democrat. It's not necessarily the percent of them being a Democrat. It's their likeliness of being a Democrat or being a Republican. Uh, and that is weighed on a 100-point scale with 100 being a Democrat and zero being Republican. So you should have access to that, to scores um, within your van, your vote builder. If not, I would contact your van administrator and figure out if you can get access to scores. Awesome. Then we've got one more that says, what are some techniques that can be used to hold volunteers accountable? To hold volunteers accountable, I definitely think having something in writing is helpful and then a periodic check-in. 
So, uh, for example, if you do have a meeting and you're assigning, you know, everybody's going to be responsible for a variety of things. If you follow up with that meeting with a written uh, explanation of who's going to be doing what, I think that is helpful for uh, holding people accountable. And then doing periodic check-ins to be like, hey, I know you were going to make, you know, 20 calls to uh, do some volunteer outreach for us. You know, where are you with that? And how can I help support you with that? So, you know, reiterating back to what the volunteer head did, did agree to, and then asking, you know, where they are with that and how they can better be supported. Now that you know the foundations of structuring your local party, you need the fundamentals of campaigns. In this Q&A, our expert trainers discuss how campaigns can get ahead of the curve and stay motivated through the challenges on the campaign trail. And for more on building campaigns and local parties, take one of our free expert-led courses linked in the description below. See you at the next one.